After World War II, several nations across the globe were ready to modernize their armies and embrace a new generation of warfare technology, and the Royal Swedish Army was no exception. In the mid-1950s, the Swedish prepared to replace their highly successful Centurion tanks with a new tank that would be like nothing the world had seen before. Their plan was to build the first tank in history to use a turbine engine instead of a conventional piston diesel engine, ensuring that the vehicle's power and speeds were superior to most existing tanks. The tank would also be fitted with a mighty Beaufort 105mm L74 rifled gun that would provide it with immense firepower on top of its unparalleled agility. Still, the engineers' research showed that the tank's height was closely related to how vulnerable the vehicle was and the Royal Swedish Army Material Administration made a decision that would define a new generation of armored warfare. A different perspective. In both World War I and World War II, the Swedish did everything in their power to remain neutral, but they eventually leaned to the side of the Allies, providing humanitarian aid and other supplies while making it clear that they did not desire to participate in the conflict. Their neutral philosophy resulted in a military perspective focused on defense rather than offense and in keeping their soldiers' lives safe at all costs. While other nations were developing armored vehicles prioritizing the highest scores possible, the Swedish focused on a robust and agile tank that would be hard to hit and with no apparent vulnerabilities to be exploited. Hence, after carefully studying tank casualty rates from World War II and the Korean War, Swedish engineers realized that most of the damage caused to a tank and its crew happened when the turret was struck. The turret was a significant vulnerability point because it was the highest point in the vehicle, making it easier to be seen and targeted above terrain bulges and other obstructions. However, another disadvantage was that turrets were designed to rotate freely to aim the main gun, which meant that the connection point between the tank and the turret would always be a weak spot. If a lucky hit impacted the connection point, it would be much more likely to inflict fatal damage to the crew than if it struck a more heavily armored tank section. The decision was then taken to build a tank with no turret. Streetswagen 103 Getting rid of the concept of a rotating turret brought many advantages to the eventual Streetswagen 103, or STRV 103. It made the tank height much lower, significantly decreasing its chances to be hit, and it also made the tank considerably lighter, resulting in a faster and more maneuverable vehicle. If that wasn't enough, foregoing the turret also allowed the STRV 103 to be completely amphibious while lowering the risk of flooding. The final design ended up with a height of exactly 7 feet, which was a significant improvement over other tanks of its type that reached over 9 feet, making them a somewhat more visible target to anti-tank crews and their weapons. Having no turret system also left much more space for the crew inside the vehicle, which translated into an additional groundbreaking feature, the addition of duplicate controls for crew members. While other tanks needed a crew of four to operate correctly, Every position inside the STRV-103 had a set of duplicate controls that allowed each serviceman to perform the functions of other crew members from their very own post. In theory, this meant that a single crew member could operate all the tank's tasks from a single spot. Despite the novel feature, Swedish authorities decided that operating all tank functions was too much for one crew member or even for two so they agreed that the minimum operational personnel would be three servicemen. Still, the duplicate control function gave the tank a significant advantage. In the case of an emergency, any crew member could take over the functions of another operator, making the functionality of the tank much more efficient and practical. Even though the decision to exclude a turret brought many advantages to the design, it also entailed severe complications, the most significant of which was aiming the gun. A fixed main gun. As the STRV-103 had no moving turret, 
The main Bofor L74 105mm L62 rifled gun was mounted directly into the vehicle's hull, which prevented it from rotating or tilting up or down independently from the tank. To solve this disadvantage, the STRV-103 was fitted with a fully automated transmission and suspension system, which accurately turned and tilted the tank under the gunner's control. In short, the whole tank would rotate and elevate or lower its hull to point the gun in the right direction. The fixed gun configuration came with a considerable price, as the tank could not accurately move and fire simultaneously. Still, the Swedish didn't fret about that drawback, as experience with Centurions had taught them that most tanks tended to stop before they fired. The end result was a sight to behold. When the tank attempted to acquire a target, it would swiftly rotate to face the direction of the opponent, and just as a modified low-rider car, the suspension system would elevate or descend the front part of the tank in order to tilt the gun in the adequate angle. The suspension and transmission systems were remarkable, and they gave the tank unparalleled maneuverability and speed. However, such features would not have been so impressive if it wasn't for the tank's state-of-the-art engine systems. The first turbine tank. Besides having no turret, the other factor that made the STRV-103 utterly unique was the fact that it was the first tank to be propelled by a turbine engine. When most armored vehicles still used piston diesel engines, the Swedish decided to push technology further and equip their already ambitious tank design with a powerful 490 horsepower Caterpillar turbine. The potent aircraft turbine engine was designed to operate as the tank reached high speeds to give it additional acceleration and agility. In contrast, a 240-horsepower Rolls-Royce K60 opposed piston diesel engine would produce the propelling at lower rates. The dual-engine configuration was the first of its kind, and it was possible thanks to the additional space available inside the tank, resulting from the relinquishing of a turret system. The final product was a fast, limber, low-profile tank, with outstanding armor but awkward aiming functions. Still, during early testing, the STRV-103 was found to be reliable and safe, and it was deemed an essential asset for the Royal Swedish Army. Additional trials were conducted in 1967, when Norway carried out a two-week comparative observation test with the Leopard 1, and concluded that the STRV-103 acquired more targets and fired faster than the Leopard. Furthermore, from April to September of 1968, Two STRV-103s were tested at the British Armour School in Bovington, after which officials reported that, quote, the turretless concept of the S-Tank holds a considerable advantage over turreted tanks. Unfortunately, a sudden change in military direction in Sweden during the 1980s turned the defensive tank doctrine into an offensive philosophy, while budget reductions also called for a diminishing of armoured forces. This resulted in all Stridsvagen 103s being decommissioned and replaced by the newer Stridsvagen 2000. Ultimately, the Stridsvagen 103 never saw active combat, despite the promising test results. Thank you for watching our video. Do you think the Stridsvagen 103 would have done well in combat? Let us know in the comment section below. And for more exciting history-inspired content, don't forget to subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the bell icon to be the first to know about our new releases. Stay tuned for more.